and thanks so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 20th day of May 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first uh, on the hazardous, or not, or the breakout map, not the hazardous weather graphic, um, we'll see that we've got, uh, as soon as it gets up here, there we go. Uh, some pretty good open water there along the Yukon River. Uh, still got uh, kind of the central zone there, or the uh, mid-river valley area. I've got uh, mostly open, suggesting still a little bit of ice in areas, but pretty much all the way down to the delta, it's mostly open. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, Kobuk River, Koyukuk River, same thing, becoming more open with these passing day. But the Kobuk River there, as you can see, mostly ice out toward the uh, coast. And the Noatak River uh, has some open areas there and a couple of stretches of even mostly open, but the North Slope River is uh, still pretty well, or still are still iced over. Uh, be a little longer before they start, we start seeing any break up there. And from there, now the hazardous weather graphic, there's a wind advisory out for the Eastern Alaska Range, uh, especially through the passes west of the Toe Cutoff uh, for or through midday till about noon on fr or, yeah, Friday. <laughs> and that's for uh, winds to continue gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour. Like today, Delta Junction seeing winds gust to 45 miles an hour. But uh, there's also a fire danger warning uh, for, for really high fire danger with those winds, dry conditions. And that's out until midnight tonight. So that's why the advisory area there, wind advisory, but it's red because of the uh, extreme fire danger in that zone due to the winds. And that's out until midnight tonight. Uh, so any fire gets going in the winds there, it'll really take off uh, pretty good. Be an easy, easy time to make a fire in those conditions and hard to put it out. Anyway, moving on to the uh, remainder, that's the only watch it advisory or warning out anywhere in the state uh, for uh, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, maybe even into the first day of the weekend. Otherwise, pretty good low pressure area south of the Alaska Peninsula bringing uh, pretty good rain into the uh, Kodiak Island area. 12 hour amounts heaviest was at uh, Kodiak State Airport with one and a third inches falling at uh, the state airport uh, in the 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, let's see, four tenths of an inch uh, or half an inch fell at uh, Cape Newenham with uh, four tenths of an inch falling on Alaska on the island with that wrap back, wrap around bent back occlusion there, bringing the uh, pretty good moisture into the eastern Aleutians. And otherwise, uh, lighter amounts up to the northeast there, but rain on the increase as that moisture shifts up. Uh, only two hundredths of an inch falling at Anchorage uh, at the International Airport, but since then it's uh, been more than that because I can hear it falling on the roof above me here. So it's coming down a little heavier than that, but otherwise only seven hundredths of an inch so far at Homer and, uh, and uh, Seward, or I'm sorry, Kenai and Seward had about seven hundredths, but I'm sure <clears throat> they got more than that this time. And uh, windy conditions as well with the system gusting to 50 miles an hour at Kaliganik and King Salmon, <coughs> excuse me, also seeing gusts to 50 miles per hour. And uh, let's see, at the Barren Islands uh, had the strongest wind gusts there. Amatuli Island had gusts to 62 miles per hour and Delta Junction gusts 45 miles an hour out of the east southeast. And uh, so the winds, uh, pretty good winds and rain with that Cape New and seeing gusts to about uh, 50 miles an hour with around just under half an inch of precipitation falling there. So pretty good area of storminess with that wind and rain. And that's going to be moving eastward. Strong southwest jet, southwest flow will be driving that moisture into the panhandle. Uh, increasing chances of rain late tonight for the central north coast of the southeast coast uh, late tonight. And then a good shot as that moves gets pushed on through during the day tomorrow, especially in the northern part of this panhandle. Otherwise, a fair amount of sunshine over the central northern interior. And uh, 
Also some clearing on the north slope, still looking white there. There were some clouds, but uh, that's still the uh, snow cover and ice up there. You can see the ice actually opening up on the western Arctic coast and as well as the uh, Mackenzie Bay area and really opening up over the northern Bering Sea, quite a bit of uh, thinning out of the ice there as it usually does this time of the year throughout the month of May and going in toward June. Otherwise, uh, not bad out over the Aleutians. Looks like mostly cloudy skies, uh, higher pressure behind that uh, low pressure area there west of the uh, Fox Islands, Adak and Atka. Looks like Atka had some sunshine, especially on the south coast there, maybe even Shimia. Pribloff's uh, in the clouds, St. Lawrence Island. Looks like some clearing occurring there as well. On the chart today, you can see the uh, tighter gradient there with that low center near the Sand Point area, and then that uh, front or trough swinging up to the uh, area, bringing moderate amounts of rain. Pretty good shot there east side of Kodiak Island. And rain on the increase north Gulf Coast today in the afternoon over the inland areas, northern Cook Inlet. Seeing gusts uh, as well of Portage, seeing gusts 50 miles an hour out of the east today with uh, rain increasing, but uh, higher pressure keeping it dry over the southeast coast with uh, some sunshine. And again, some sunshine over the central interior there, then chance areas of light snow over the eastern Arctic coast, flurries, fog, uh, mixture conditions into the Brooks Range and some scattered isolated showers over the uh, eastern interior there from uh, looks like Eagle on up toward the eastern Brooks Range. High pressure uh, drying it out and lightening the winds there over the western Aleutians, southwestern Bering Sea for tonight. The front weakens, the gradient slackens off, stays a little breezy there for the uh, Alaska Peninsula north winds, possibly guessing 40 miles an hour, say Falls Pass, the windy areas, King Cove, and uh, through the passes there. Otherwise, lighter winds, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay winds really coming down, but periods of light rain continue across much of southern Alaska, pushing up into the Susitna Valley, northern Susitna Valley, even over across the Copper River Basin, look for some rain. Of course, snow at higher elevations, and then that uh, band of rain in pushing onto the uh, coast tonight, central and north coast of the Panhandle, see an increase in clouds elsewhere. High pressure, light winds, and dry conditions for uh, central western Aleutians, even the Pribilofs kind of in the ridging there with the uh, shower activity up to your north. And still a chance of some uh, snow flurry conditions there, the eastern Arctic coast, otherwise areas of low clouds and fog, central and west side. Wind's not too bad, maybe a breeze there for the areas of the eastern Brooks Range. And the uh, winds continue through tonight, as I mentioned, until t uh, midday tomorrow for the uh, eastern Alaska Range Delta Junctions. We'll be looking at 45 mile an hour wind gusts. And again, that continues into uh, midday Friday with that low center up near the, uh, just north of Eagle or just northwest of Eagle and a trough to another low center there uh, near Shishmaref or actually near Buckland. Areas of uh, showers and clouds, cool conditions, south central all the way down to the North Gulf Coast. Uh, that low center south of Kodiak, close enough to keep a chance of rain going there. Uh, probably seeing more showery conditions for the North Gulf Coast with that ridging building up and also Rain changes to showers uh, for the Panhandle. Possible clearing with another reek ridge swinging through the area there. High pressure shifts eastward over the Bering Sea and the Fox Islands with uh, light winds, dry conditions. Mostly cloudy skies, maybe some sun breaks for the Fox Islands uh, on Alaska, Dutch Harbor, and Nikolsky, as well as Adak and Attu. But periods of rain, low clouds, fog for the areas from Amchitka westward to Shimia in southerly flow there. And then the outlook for uh, Saturday, first day of the weekend, uh, high pressure in the west there, right over the yukon Cusquam Delta, dominating the conditions for the eastern Bering, actually, and the Alaska Peninsula Bristol Bay. Look for a fair amount of sunshine there, some possible shower conditions in the green-shaded areas in the afternoon, possibly. Uh, light, scattered, isolated showers, and uh, that kind of increases there with, uh, looks kind of uh, showery for the Brooks Range. Chance of snow anywhere along the Arctic coast, light snow. Uh, especially the east side there, showers over the eastern interior. In fact, it looks uh, mostly cloudy and showery and cool for the central and eastern interior of the state, right down to the Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast area, on up to the Brooks Range. And that uh, low pressure, much weaker than the one today in the Gulf there, that southwest flow, it's a wet weather pattern, will keep uh, periods of rain going, especially the central and northern panhandle, a little more showery and lighter amounts down to the south toward Dixon entrance, might even see some clearing. And then a pretty uh, potent storm comes into the uh, picture there, uh, closing in on ADAC, the low center, with a very tight gradient, good for gale force winds there for 
uh, Adak and Atka, and winds will be on the increase throughout the afternoon for Nikolsky, but not for the Pribilofs, maybe some sunshine, dry conditions there, as I mentioned, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, a fair amount of sun with light winds. And looking at the lows tonight, uh, lower to mid 40s for the Panhandle, upper 30s to mid 40s, southern Alaska, lower 40s, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, lower 40s for the Kuskokwim Valley, lower to mid 40s, central interior, upper 20s to mid 30s for the Brooks Range, and in the 20s for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, upper 20s, lower 30s, St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait coast of the, Alaska, of the Seward Peninsula, upper 30s for Nome, upper 20s for Shishmaref. And uh, 35 to 40 for the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians. Highs tomorrow, 50s to maybe near 60, I'll just say 50s, southern Alaska, near 50 for Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and 50 to 55 for the Panhandle up in the interior, 55 to 65 or 6 or 7, maybe even 68 in some areas. Over the Yukon Flats, lower 30s, or in the 30s for the Arctic Coast, North Slope, into the Bering Sea, northern Bering, St. Lawrence Island, 40s for the Aleutians and uh, Alaska Peninsula. And then for the uh, lows following morning, 30s to lower 40s, Southern Alaska, mid 40s for the Panhandle. Upper 30s to lower 40s or mid 40s, the interior, upper 20s on the Arctic coast. And highs, 50s and 60s for Saturday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For uh, Friday morning, IFR North Slope Arctic Coast, much of the Bering Sea and into the uh, Norton Sound area, northern or much of the Yukon Delta to the lower Yukon River Valley <clears throat> into Togiak Bay, Cape Newenham, Southwest Mountains there, and uh, Kodiak Island, uh, IFR, Shilakoff Strait side, the marginal and uh, Cook Inlet, southern central Cook Inlet, uh, marginal VFR, some IFR along the Alaska Range west side up to the central areas, and IFR, Prince William Sound, uh, eastern Turnagain Arm, Portage, Whittier, Passage Canal, and into the possibly Southern Copper River Basin, most likely getting hung up in the coast range there. Uh, marginal VFR along the southeast coast there, with some marginal VFR, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, especially Glacier Bay VFR there on the interior. And for the uh, afternoon, we've got uh, areas of marginal VFR on the central and eastern interior areas. And then for uh, IFR, along the North Gulf Coast into the Panhandle, Bering Sea IFR in the North Slope and Arctic Coast, IFR. And for the uh, afternoon, Saturday morning, IFR Bering Sea again in the Gulf of Alaska, in over the Panhandle, North Slope, Brooks Range, Arctic Coast areas, and along the Alaska Range, a little heavier IFR now, all the way from Bristol Bay, right up along the Aleutian Range, Iliamna Lake, right up uh, Denali Park, and possibly Healy, Cantwell, maybe IFR, marginal VFR, areas of the central interior with some VFR thrown in. Otherwise, for Saturday afternoon, improving over the interior, especially the uh, central and east side, with lingering lower conditions over the mountainous terrain, uh, locally into the Yukon Flats though, and IFR, Brooks Range, North Slope Arctic Coast, uh, areas of v marginal VFR on the west side, and again, uh, Norton Sound, Nome, St. Lawrence Island, much of the Bering Sea, and the central and eastern Aleutians IFR, and the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula looks like a narrow swath of VFR, and Kodiak Island VFR, Southern Cook Inlet, Kuskokwim Valley, Copper River Basin, all VFR. IFR on uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, much of the Panhandle. And for Anatovic, IFR becomes VFR. And for Adigan, IFR becoming VFR uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Huh? Merrill, or Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, uh, becomes VFR for the afternoon. And rainy, occasionally marginal at times, uh, Maybe not so much in the afternoon, but a little more so in the morning, VFR at other times. Windy, possibly marginal VFR, either approach at times tomorrow, won't be solid marginal VFR from start to finish, but uh, at times throughout the day. And Isabel looks good, VFR, Mentasta, same forecast, good VFR there. And Tanita starting out marginal, but becoming VFR into the afternoon toward evening. Portage, IFR to start, and maybe optimistically becoming marginal VFR, especially that eastern entrance, hopefully, in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR becoming IFR, that southwest jet pushing all that moisture into the area throughout the day. Freezing levels, uh, 68,000 feet with that uh, milder southwest flow aloft uh, jet stream into the panhandle, otherwise 2,000 feet, uh, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin back up to 6,000 feet over the northeast interior. 
and uh, 2,000 feet central Bering Sea to 8,000 feet over the central Aleutians. Icing, areas of uh, considerable moderate rime icing moving up into well as pr west or western Prince William Sound, areas along the North Gulf Coast into the northern Panhandle can see considerable moderate, again, rime icing, light to isolated moderate rime down toward uh, Dixon Entrance and Kenai Peninsula, Barren Islands there, southern Cook Inlet to northern Kodiak Island and areas of uh, mixed icing possible there over the western interior, quite an area there over the Yukon River to the uh, Seward Peninsula area. Icing free, central eastern Bering Sea, and then some more storminess and moisture bringing uh, another area, another batch of icing into the far western Bering in the western Aleutians. Jet stream, upper level low, uh, right over the southern Kenai Peninsula area, so strong southwest jet, 105 knots into the northern Panhandle. Of course, that's a wet weather pattern and uh, northwest 70 to 85 knots over the eastern Bering Sea just grazing the southwest coast blowing across the Alaska Peninsula turns southwest but only 65 over the western Aleutians high pressure aloft over the northeast interior upper level low one over Norton Sound at 9,000 feet or the Seward Peninsula Kodiak Island and southwest at about 40 knots here in the Panhandle northwest 40 to 45 knots eastern Bering southwest to the other side of that ridge over the western Bering Sea 3,000 feet not too bad 20 to 35 knots there uh, Nunavak Island, the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop there for the Alaska Peninsula and Unalaska Island and the North Gulf Coast Light to Iceland. Turn around bright eyes because there is a total eclipse of the moon coming next week to the West Coast on May 26th. And here's what you need to know. The full eclipse will happen at exactly 11.11 UTC or 4.11 AM Pacific time. You can snap a pic of the screen because of time zones, totality will happen at different times depending on your location. Hawaii will get a great show, but if you're east of the Mississippi, you're only gonna get a partial eclipse. Total lunar eclipses happen because every two and a half years, the orbits align so the Earth is exactly between the sun and the moon. When that happens, our planet's shadow, or umbra, falls entirely across the face of the moon, turning it a shade of rusty pink for about 15 minutes. That said, the full eclipse can take hours as the edges of our shadow or penumbra slowly overtake the moon so hit the sky early enjoy the show and keep looking up the beluga whale also known as the white whale, lives in large groups and are unusual among whales. They have no dorsal fin, large bulbous heads, and they can actually swim backwards. To feed, they produce sound to find and hunt fish and invertebrates, and they use sound to communicate. They're also known as the canaries of the sea because they make such a diversity of noises. They make chirps and whistles and gurgles and trumpeting sounds. They just make all kinds of sounds. In the U.S., beluga whales live in the cold waters of Alaska, and there are five separate populations. Of those five, the Cook Inlet population is the smallest and has declined by about 75%. Subsistence hunting may have contributed to this initial population drop, but this practice was regulated starting in 1999, with the last hunt in 2005. Still, the beluga population here has yet to recover. We listed Cook and the beluga whales as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act in 2008, and we had hoped that the population would start recovering, but we are still seeing a continued decline. And these beluga whales are only found in Cook Inlet, and so if they go extinct, we don't think any other belugas will come back and populate this area. These whales spend most of their summer near Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, where threats to belugas are on the rise as the city grows. These may include diminishing food, habitat loss or destruction, pollution, toxins, and human-caused noise which hampers their ability to feed and communicate. Researchers are trying to understand which of these threats may be impacting them most, but Cook Inlet is a tough place to work. It's really hostile for research. We have the strong tides, which makes it challenging for human safety, and we can't see through the water. It is very muddy, so we're pretty much limited to the part of the animal that breaks the surface of the water. And as a result, we have limited information about the specific population dynamics of Cook and the Beluga whales. Up until recently, 
Information has mainly come from annual aerial surveys from aircraft and boat or shore-based photo identification surveys that use unique markings to tell animals apart. Scientists also use passive acoustics to listen for belugas, but none of these methods can detect much information about their health. So it's really been a game changer with, with the whole species in the spotlight designation. We've gotten more resources within our agency. For instance, we're able to use a drone to collect some aerial imagery of belugas in the wild, and we're hoping to learn some information about the age classes, information about the health status. And probably the most important bit of information that we'll get out of that is we'll be able to identify the new calves. And we're hoping if we keep doing this every year, we'll be able to get an estimate of calf production every year that will tell us something about how well the population is doing. We are also expanding upon our biopsy studies, hopefully to give us some information about sex, the individual's reproductive status, some genetic information, uh, some contaminant loads. Public and private partners are contributing as well. Some are looking at toxin levels in the whale's prey, while others are analyzing beluga teeth to learn about their age and past diet. Others monitor water quality and how belugas react to boats and more check to see if their behavior changes with increased background noise. All of these findings will go toward developing effective recovery strategies for this population. As for what you can do, if you're out boating, give beluga space. Don't drive right up next to them. Stay about 100 yards away. If you're flying over them, just remember that you're putting noise into the water as well, and so stay at least 1,500 feet above them. Report a stranded beluga whale as soon as possible, and that's if they're dead stranded or live stranded. The amount of information that we can learn from these animals by responding to a stranding is monumental and it will help our efforts to recover them. Together we can help beluga whales thrive in the dynamic waters of Cook Inlet. With continued research and good stewardship, we hope to see this population grow in the years to come. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back uh, today's sea ice analysis. <clears throat> Continuing the slow dissolve there of the ice pack over in the northern Bering Sea. Big area open water now uh, south of St. Lawrence Island, right up to the south coastline. Along the southwest coast, hardly anything. Yukon, or the, uh, there at Nunavak Island, practically no ice left. And along the southwest coast from Hooper Bay on down, uh, not much left either, and slowly melting away there in Norton Sound. And for the uh, coastal water forecasts, inside waters, central and southern, including Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage, winds will be southeast at 20 knots with four foot seas, 15 knots from the south for Lynn Canal, 20 knots there for Prince of Wales Island along the outer coastline, and then small craft advisory central and north coast, 30 knots out of the southeast with 10 to 13 foot seas. And then for sun, or Saturday, lighter winds south to southwest 15 knots on the south coast, south to southeast 20 knots north coast with 8-foot seas. And Lynn Canal south 15 and the central southern inside waters uh, not bad, 10 to 15 knot winds from the south and southeast with 2 to 3-foot seas. And gale warnings uh, for tomorrow out of the east uh, or east southeast there for the uh, eastern north gulf coast 35 knots sustained seas up to 14 feet small craft advisories prince william sound east winds 25 knots and cook inlet small craft advisories northeast winds 25 knots five to six foot seas and 30 knot winds out of the east for kamishak bay barren island southeast to 20 seas 10 feet and then for Saturday for the western north Gulf Coast, northeast at 20 knots, east 20 knots for the eastern north Gulf Coast, and Prince William Sound, light winds out of the north, 10 knots, seas 2 feet, Cook Inlet, southwest 10 with 2 foot seas, Barren Islands north at 15, and west 15 for Kamishak Bay. And uh, for the uh, Bristol Bay zone tomorrow, west winds 15 knots with small craft advisories, westerly winds about 25 knots blowing across the Alaska, Alaska Peninsula with seas around 8 feet. Uh, light winds though, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, east to 10 with 10 foot seas, southeast 20 for the east side of Kodiak Island and variable east of 15, Shellacoff Strait. West winds at 15 continue, Prince William Sound with 4 foot seas on Saturday and west southwest breeze 15 knots, 4 to 7 foot seas for the Alaska Peninsula. Castle Cape to Sitkanak, winds will be out of the northwest at 20 knots, seas 7 feet, Kodiak Island west-northwest at 15. 
Friday for the Fox Islands, uh, Unalaska Island small craft advisories, northwest 25 to 30 knots, seas just under 10 feet. Unmac Island, northwest of 20, seas 7 feet. Adak and Atka, west of 15. South 15 for Amchitka, Kiskashimi and Atu, southerlies 20 knots, sea 6 feet. For Saturday, Western Aleutians, northwest winds, 30 knots, 12 foot seas, and that's from Kiska to Shimia. Amchitka Island, though, southeast, 30 knots, 10 foot seas, and then gale warnings for Adak and, At Adak and Atka. South to southeast, 35 knots, 9 to 14 foot seas, small craft advisories for the uh, Fox Islands, 25 knot winds from the south southeast for Unalaska Island, Umac Island, southeast to 30, seas just under 10 feet. Southwest coast, northwest winds, 20 knots, 4 to 6 foot seas. Uh, Pearl Offs, northwest winds, 20 knots, seas 6 feet. Same thing for St. Matthew Island, out of the northwest to 20. St. Lawrence Island, west 20. Norton Sound, southwest to 10. And for Saturday, Norton Sound, west 15, seas at about 2 feet, even, but lighter winds for St. Lawrence Island, west to 10, 3 foot seas. And not too bad for the southwest coast. Yukon Delta Coast, southwest winds, 15 knots, west 15 for Kamishak Bay. I'm sorry, Kamishak Bay, Kuskokwim Bay, blowing into Kuskokwim Bay, south of Nunavak Island, southeast winds 20 knots, 5-foot seas for St. Matthew, St. Paul, and St. George Islands. Arctic Coast, uh, Briscoe and Advisories, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast tomorrow for Easterlies, 25 to 30 knots, 20 knots out of the east for the central and west side, turning northeast to 20 down to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Wales, north winds 20 knots. And for Saturday, Bruce Glenn Advisors continue Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, 25 to 30 knot winds, strongest toward demarcation point, 20 knots on the central coast, west 15 uh, from, for the uh, western coast all the way down to Wales. And for tonight, again, some flurries possible there, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, fog, maybe some snow showers into the Berks Range, Eastern North Slope area, Eastern Berks Range, otherwise low clouds and fog, maybe some clearing there, uh, south of the Berks Range, Koyukuk Valley, Upper Yukon Valley, and areas of rain, mostly cloudy skies, showers west of the Alaska Range, east side though, rain with that front, uh, lighter winds though for the Barren Islands and Bristol Bay, Rain on the increase, rain chances of on the increase for the north coast of the Panhandle, central coast as well. And for tomorrow, that uh, front moves through and pretty showering cool into Saturday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.